Hi everyone, in this video, I will go through how to run 2D limit equilibrium stability analysis and how to calculate the factor of safety. And also I'm gonna show, how, show you how to estimate the critical uh, yield coefficients or critical uh, seismic coefficient inside slide two. And then I will run uh, sodostatic. After that, I will use the acceleration time history inside uh, slide two using the slammer engine inside slide two to uh, estimate the deformation by applying earthquake motions directly inside slide two so first step always as always we need to define the geometry of the model we can do that by different ways you can if you are familiar with autocad you can define the geometry in AutoCAD and then import the model from here as a DXF or you can define the geometry inside slide 2 by clicking on this icon and then type T from table as a table then click enter and you can now enter the coordinates X and Y for the external now we define the external click on C enter now we have closed geometry for defining the, uh, the layers the first layer we can define it by clicking on this the shortcut for this icon is control 2 and type t for table click enter and then paste these and this is the first layer right click and click on done then now we need to define the second layer again click on this icon or control 2 shortcut type t then enter then paste the coordinates now we define three layers to define the property for each layer so we can go to the property then define material we have three layers here for all the layers i'm going to use more column for all three layers for, so more column is very um, very famous uh, constitutive models that we usually use uh, it's very simple it needs only two parameters which is the cohesion and friction angle and of course the unit weight it's assume the soil uh, behave as elastic perfectly plastic so uh, in this model we're going to use more columns for three materials once you define the material property we can assign them by clicking on the assign property or control a and then you can assign them like that so i already defined the property for each layers and i already uh, defined the scenarios that i need to analyze in different models just to save time so here in the first scenario i have no seismic load it's just uh, static and uh, I already defined the property for each layer. For example, here, this is the property. Soil number one, the yellow color has unit weight 19.5 kilonewton per cubic meter. The friction, the friction angle is 38, cohesion is zero. The second layer has 5.3 kilopascal cohesion and 23 degree of friction angle with 19.5 kilonewton per cubic meter as unit weight. The third layer has 7.2 kilopascal cohesion, 20 friction angle, and 19.5 unit weight, kilonewton per cubic meter. For all scenarios, it's exactly the same geometry, exactly the same geology. The only difference is the first scenario has no uh, loading, it's just basically static, nothing, it's just self weight, and we want to estimate the factor of safety. The second scenario, I have applied horizontal seismic coefficients from loading, seismic load, the horizontal seismic coefficients equal to 0.15. Later, in different features, I will show you how to estimate that. There's many different ways to estimate it. I will go with you how to estimate this in future videos or future tutorials. So this is the second scenario. Third scenarios, 
uh, we need to estimate the critical acceleration or yield acceleration you need to activate that by going to the settings and the seismic and activate the advanced seismic analysis so what will do it will estimate the k sub y the critical seismic coefficients just before the failure which is uh, assign a target of factor of safety at one so just before the failure occurred we're going to estimate the critical seismic coefficients this is the third scenario the fourth scenario here i'm applying acceleration time history using the slammer by going to seismic activate the new mark displacement then click on new mark slammer actually it's a built-in engine inside slide 2 based on this paper if you are interested you can download this paper it's free uh, and you can read about it it's basically uh, it's what 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 this uh, slammer do what slammer code do actually it's applying the seismic load in terms of acceleration time history to the model and it double integrate the acceleration to obtain the, the displacement and then apply to the model whenever the seismic load exceed the yield the yield coefficient if that makes sense so it will apply the acceleration and whenever the, uh, the seismic load exceed the ky through the critical slip surface it will double integrate the acceleration to obtain the deform the displacement and then accumulate this deformation or displacement together to obtain the final dis displacement okay so if you want to assign the size the acceleration time history you can click on define and then you put the time uh, in the first column and the acceleration in unit of g's in the second column there are some examples here i'm using uh, some examples but you can define yours by just copy pasting the the data directly here the motion that I'm using, I'm using, or the acceleration time history, it's uh, it has magnitude 6.1. Uh, it's uh, Mammoth Lake, 1980. The area intensity of this motion 2.3. Duration is almost nine seconds. It's not too long. The peak ground acceleration 0.42 g, and the peak ground velocity is 23 centimeter per second and uh, this is also the other property of this motion okay and for the for the fourth scenario here i'm using rigid analysis down slope only and there is no scaling and for displacement computing i'm using the maximum and positive and negative uh, values there's too many uh, many different uh, options but i'm using the maximum positive negative uh, uh, option which is actually the default this is for the fourth scenario for the fifth scenario i'm using exactly the same as fourth but the only difference here is i'm using coupled analysis there is a uh, fourth type of analysis i'm using coupled in this case and if you choose coupled the user can define the shear wave velocity above and below the slip surface okay so the shear wave velocity of the material above and below the slip surface can be defined here with damping ratio 5% which is typical and you can also choose uh, linear or equivalent linear in this analysis I'm just going to use linear analysis and that's it so here we have no seismic here we have seismic coefficients equal to 0.15 here we are calculating k sub y the critical critical horizontal coefficients, seismic coefficients, and here we are assigning uh, a real acceleration time history to the model to estimate the deformation in this one, in this scenario and this scenario. So let's see the results, what they look like. By clicking on the interpret here. So 
if I want to see all the results at once, we can click on this icon here or this one if you want to see different style. This is so this is the first scenario here with no seismic loading it's just estimating the factor of safety and actually i forgot to show you uh, which method we are using to estimate the factor of safety if you go to the settings and click on methods i'm using only one uh, method here which is spencer method okay so this method is uh, or this factor of safety was estimated using Spencer method 1.4 factor of safety and then the second scenario here I'm using uh, the I'm estimating the K sub Y the hook, hook, sorry I'm estimating the factor of safety using uh, or applying seismic horizontal coefficient equal to 0.15 of course the factor of safety went down when it's almost like uh, failed below because it's below one so like a 0.98 because of the seismic loading the horizontal seismic coefficient i assigned to the model the third one like the third scenario here i'm uh, estimating the horizontal or critical ho seismic horizontal coefficients uh, by fixing the factor of safety equal to one i obtain 0.139 now by assigning uh, a real acceleration time history with, with using rigid analysis type we obtain 5.12 centimeters as i said before this is by integrating the acceleration from the input two times to obtain the displacement and then the accumulative displacement through the slip surface is equal to this number whenever the seismic loading exceed the yield coefficients and then finally the fifth scenario here i'm estimating the deformation using the slammer engine similar to fourth scenario the only difference here is I'm using a coupled analysis and also I'm defining the shear wave velocity above and below the slip surface. And that's it for this video. Uh, I forgot also to show you uh, what surface type I'm using. In all analysis, I'm using non circular, which is most of the case, it's always the most critical one. And for the search method, there are uh, six different methods, but I'm using here in uh, using Kubo search. Uh, you can also apply some filter for the critical slip surface. You can apply any of these uh, filters. And that's it. I hope uh, I hope you like this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.